Hello, and welcome to this video lecture for Chapter 11, Executing the Plan. So let's get started. Here's our agenda for, for uh, executing, executing the plan. First, we'll look at performing the activities of the schedule. Next, producing the scope. Three, uh, maintaining the budget. Four, monitoring the risks. Five, creating the communications. And finally, managing the quality of the deliverables. There's a lot of different aspects to today's agenda, so we'll get underway. So again, a look at our project life cycle, and we are now moving out of the planning phase and into the executing phase. And this is the first step or the, the first chapter that begins to talk about uh, the executing phase. And for chapter 11 is executing the plan. So let's talk about the executing phase for a moment, because this is our first chapter that has uh, entered this phase. So with the completion of planning, the project moves to executing. So we finished our plans and it's time to move on. Uh, during this phase, the creation and the key thing, this is where the results or the, the uh, planning that we did in the previous phase, this is where we create what was actually planned before. So the, it's the creation of the project's product, service, or result. The project team often increases in size at this point. More team members are often and usually needed in order to produce the deliverables of the project. So we often see a dramatic increase uh, in the number of team members and as well as the costs uh, that are incurred uh, usually goes up during the, the uh, executing phase. So, First thing we want to look at is, and these are the things that happen during the executing phase, is one is we perform the activities of the schedule. Now, this may seem fairly uh, intuitive, but not always, it's not always the case. Oftentimes, plans are created during the planning phase, and then during the executing phase, they are either uh, not referred to often or even ignored. So the project schedule um, that was created during the planning phase should be actively monitored to ensure that all activities are completed. So you can see a little portion of our Gantt chart there, and you can see the various activities that are scheduled to be started and completed on certain dates, and we should uh, make sure that we adhere to that. Now, oftentimes with life being what it is and projects being what they are, the timing and duration of activities often vary from the schedule, is that uh, the best played, laid plans are often uh, uh, don't uh, work out due to uh, unforeseen circumstances, uh, issues arise, and so on. So, so that happens. Now, if that happens, or when that happens, there's often a need to get ourselves back on schedule or to, um, you know, if we're, if, we're, if we're behind schedule, we need to shorten the remaining schedule. And so the question is, well, what, what approaches do we have to, to rectify that? Now, that's a key question. It's something that the project manager should really consider. And this is discussed on page 129 and 130 of your textbook. Uh, so I would invite you to to take a look at that. But just in summary, there's a few things that, that can be done. One is process improvement. Is sometimes when you start to fall behind schedule, that uh, sharpens the resolve. And that um, different ways can be um, determined to perhaps do it more efficiently. And, and sometimes that's the case. And that should really be what we're always looking for. It's sort of the uh, necessity is the mother of invention uh, theory. Now, the other thing we can do is call is uh, overlapping activities. For example, activities that were originally planned to be completely sequential can be changed to be overlapping. It's often called fast tracking. So, for example, the uh, create the, the uh, planning the project or plan the project and create the sign graphics text are shown to be completely sequential. Now, in theory, we could overlap those by a day, which, if you remember from Chapter 5, is called we could create a lead uh, in that scenario. Now, this is sometimes uh, uh, dangerous to do or, or risky because the more you overlap, 
the more the, the potential exists for mistakes to be made or rework to be required. It's also more difficult to manage when you do a lot of multitasking or overlapping, but it is an option. It's an option that's often used. You can add more resources uh, to your, to your uh, project if they're available. So, you know, for some of the, uh, maybe the create sign graphic slash text, uh, you've got one person assigned to it and it's, and it's therefore going to take you three uh, days of duration. Perhaps if you add another person, you can get it done in two days. Uh, so you can add more resources. That's often called crashing. And another option you can use, though um, it uh, um, can be can be difficult to the project sponsor, is that the scope of the project uh, can be reduced. Um, and that, of course, would need sponsor approval and so on. But it certainly you can do... Uh, if you have less scope to produce, you, you can do it faster. So that's another way of recovering the schedule. So there's various approaches that you can take. Now, so that's the one, the one, uh, the one thing that's uh, uh, done is perform the activities. The other is to produce the scope. Uh, if you remember, or please remember that in uh, uh, the planning phase, you produce the project scope statement and supporting documents and they provide a description of all your deliverables. For example, the trade show signage is described as follows in your project scope statement. So you can see all the different characteristics and so on. Well, during the executing phase, the project team should create, should provide the signage exactly as described above. Now, again, this should be common sense. You should be looking at this and, and, and saying, well, of course, but in many cases, uh, teams will start to vary from the project scope statement. They they um, will either not look or they'll forget and so on. And so they might produce six stands instead of five stands, or they might order a non-retractable banner stand. And it doesn't make sense because it's in the scope statement. So it's follow what you said you were going to do in this, in this case. Another thing you should be doing is monitoring the budget. We during budget planning, uh, we created the detailed budget. Um, and again, just like the schedule, costs may vary due to many factors as the project uh, progresses, such as work taking longer than, than estimated, unexpected problems, price changes for materials and equipment, and many other reasons uh, that um, the detailed budget that was originally envisioned may not be exactly what happens and that's why it's important to monitor your budget for example here's the detailed budget that was created but you can see near the bottom these last two rows that have been added to the bottom are where the actual costs are being tracked so you can see that in the first week the actual costs were higher than the plan costs uh, by some nine hundred and twenty dollars in the second week the costs were a little lower, were, were, were $200 less. In the third week, they were a little bit higher. So you could see that so far in the project, we are tracking to be $820 over budget so far, three weeks into an eight-week project. Well, that's, that's something that should be looked into. If that continues, if that's a trend that's going to continue, we may be a couple of thousand dollars over budget and that's something to start to prepare for and there may be some things we can start to do to rectify that we might be looking at remaining costs and if there's a way to do it for less if we can uh, reduce the cost of certain activities and so on but without monitoring the budget and tracking the actual costs and comparing them to our plan we wouldn't know this until the end of the project so this is very important we should be monitoring the risks of the project. So if you recall during planning, we created um, a couple of uh, uh, risk related planning documents. And during the executing phase, the risk response plan should be constantly monitored. Um, we should be looking at each of the risks and, and uh, determining a couple of things. One is, has the risk occurred? Um, is there, you know, is, is the mitigation or, or is the risk response still appropriate for, for the risk? Has the risk changed at all? And if it's 
about to occur, is it time to invoke our contingency plan? Uh, there may be also some cases where a risk that we um, placed on our risk response plan uh, didn't occur. Maybe maybe uh, it is now past that point in the project and it's it did not occur, in which case we could remove it from our risk response plan. There may also be other risks that are new that we couldn't or didn't see in planning and now we should add to the risk response plan. So the risk response plan through the executing uh, phase is is continuously monitored and adjusted as we go. We should be reviewing the communication management plan and uh, it should be periodically consulted to ensure the plan communications take place um, and is adjusted as needed. For example, here's the communication plan which indicated all of the things we were going to, or some of the things we were going to do during the project, during the executing phase, we should make sure these things are done and these communications are scheduled. At this point, uh, please refer to your textbook and please read the case study update called Executing the Plan in the appropriate chapter. So after you're done reading that, just come on back here and we'll, we'll continue on. Okay, so now what we're uh, moving on to is managing the quality of the deliverables. So this is, uh, this is a key item within this chapter is uh, regarding the quality of the, of the, uh, of the work there, the outputs of the project. Rec recall that during the planning phase, the quality management plan was created. This defined the quality standards for the project and any metrics that would be used to measure these standards. But in order to manage the quality of the deliverables during the executing phase, there are two other and main quality functions to perform, quality assurance and quality control. And we're going to talk about those two. First of all, I'd like you to, again, pause this video and uh, read the case study update, creating the quality assurance plan, and then come on back here when you're done. Okay, so we're back. Now, during quality assurance, uh, the key thing is now to do a couple of things. One is to review the processes that are in our project and how they can be either established or improved in order to ensure that the deliverables that we create are done in a, in a, in a, in a quality, in a high quality way. Um, some of these might be existing uh, processes that we just do on each project and that we will inherit these from our company's uh, best practices. Others may be things that are, are uh, uh, new processes that are specific to our particular project. But the key thing is to think through how is the work being done and what can we do to ensure a quality output or thinking about another way is to prevent errors before they occur. And those are through careful attention to processes. Now, in the DECOCAM project, there were three quality assurance processes that were defined. There can, there can be many more. Uh, only three were included for this. One was that all written materials are verified with the company's standard spelling and grammar checking software. So nothing will go out without being spell checked and, and grammar checked. The second is that all project deliverables will be verified as follows. First, the team member who creates the deliverable will verify it meets the specifications. So the first check is the person creating it. The second check is that it's passed over to Jason, the business analyst, who performs the tests defined in the test plan below. So Jason will then um, perform a number of predefined tests. So that's a two-step process that we've set up. And then thirdly, each team member will provide an overview of their recently completed work at the daily team huddle. So we've set up a, a process where everybody shows their completed work at the daily team huddle. And that's a way for others within the team to perhaps suggest uh, possible defects or point out things that perhaps are not quite 100% and so on. So that's another process. So... Step one in quality assurance is careful attention 
to process. Step two is the creation of what is called the test plan. And this is, this is for each deliverable specific checks that are done. Uh, each one is done and you can see uh, who will perform each test. Now, they're split up into the test one, test two, which relates back to the process. So you can see test one is always performed by the person who created it. In this case, for, for the three on this page, they're all uh, created by Chris. And so he will um, do, he will verify his own work. But then it moves over to Jason, who has specific tests. Um, for example, um, for trade show signage, Jason will follow the, the the following four. He will check the spelling and grammar of all text, and not just the uh, spell check, but also look at it visually. Graphics will be according to the company standards, so Jason will have a, a list of the company standards in terms of the graphics and make sure it's the correct colors and size and, and uh, resolution and so on. Uh, the information on the banner is accurate. So Jason will check all of the names that they're accurate. Any links must be live. The dates must be accurate. Every bit of information on the banner will be will be uh, um, intently scrutinized by Jason to make sure that it is correct. And then finally, the banner stand meets the size requirements. So we will go back, make sure that according to the scope statement, it is the size that is that is uh, indicated. So that's uh, the second step of the quality assurance plan. And we can see the second page and so on. Okay, the, the next uh, area of, of uh, the quality is quality control. So that was quality assurance. That was setting up. That was the, the idea of quality assurance is put things in place that will ensure the effective and high quality of the deliverables. Quality control is the actual doing of it. So during quality control, each of the deliverables is verified according to the processes defined in the quality assurance plan and the results of the quality control tests. So the test plan results will be recorded uh, as part of quality control. So if you really can think about it, is quality control is executing the quality assurance plan. Now, the key thing is if the deliverables are changed after the quality control testing is performed, for example, let's say that Jason does all his testing and then the deliverable is changed for some reason, an update is, made, is need, needed to be done to it, they would need to be retested using the same process as defined in the quality assurance plan. So we'd have to redo the tests for that deliverable. And that's, that's part of quality control because oftentimes errors are introduced because after we've tested it, then something has changed and then not retested. So quality control would ensure that that, that is done. Okay, the last thing in this uh, um, video lecture is for you to uh, turn to the case study uh, update, performing quality control. Uh, please read that and reflect on what is happening in the project. These are the references. Uh, and so that's the end of the video lecture. So uh, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you uh, next time.